Hey, welcome back. So what do you say we, uh, we get this final billet made? So here's uh, where we left off last time. We got the billet tiled, and now we have a usable mosaic pattern. But I'm going to change things up just a little bit. So earlier, I tested a couple pieces of ADCR V2 with some brass uh, shims inside of here. And as you can see, I couldn't quite get the brass to uh, braise itself or adhere to the steel. So with this test piece, I'm just going to get rid of the brass for now until I've kind of figured out how to do this. Um, I'm thinking I probably just didn't get it hot enough. The brass has a lower melting point than copper does, so I probably just didn't go warm enough. But I'll work on this at a later point. I just don't want to do it with this, uh, this billet that's taken me a lot of hours to get to this point. And I don't know if you've noticed these numbers up here. Uh, well, you can't really see it in the video right now, but in the other videos you might be have noticed it, but I have uh, seven hours, three hours, three hours, and four hours written down. So this is how many hours I have so far into this billet, just this billet. So if anybody ever asks you, like, why is this so much? Why is this Damascus so much? Well, there's a lot of hours that goes into making this stuff. So I don't really want to waste... 17 hours worth of work after having a failure like this until I until I get this perfected I'm going to skip that step for now so what we're going to do is take this billet cut it in half and we're going to put an 80 CRV2 core in the middle just without the brass so this will end up being a sand mai instead of a, a go mai or um, well brass doesn't really have a, a symbol like copper does so we'll just say go my anyway i'm going to get this cut i'm going to get this 80 crv2 cut and then get this welded up and start the forge welding process so with this thing i'm not going to clean up the sides because we have to weld this anyway and there's just going to be more uh weld left in there so I'm not even going to worry about cleaning that up. All I'm going to do is mark the middle of this. So we're at about like nine inches or so. So we'll just go four and a half. And then uh, get that cut. Double check where we're at here. Let me make this line a little straighter. Can't really use a an angle because these sides aren't really straight. So got four and five eighths going that way. Four and five eighths going that way. Okay. And yep, just wide enough. And we'll cut this piece about that long. It'll be a little short, but that's perfectly fine.
have been better off cutting that with the angle grinder. I probably just uh, destroyed my blade. But that's all right. All right, and then uh, we'll come over here and clean up these pieces just a little bit. Shouldn't take much. Got to clean both sides of 80, 80 CRV2. And I'm just using an 80 grit. Okay. All right, so I got this uh, tightened up in here. Actually, I gotta adjust this a little bit. Okay. So on this, because the steel is a little on the thin side, we don't have big thick pieces, I'm gonna weld this completely shut. Because again, at this point, I really don't want this to fail. So I'm just gonna weld completely shut all the way around this. And then that way we'll have a, uh, a nice enclosed piece that no oxygen can get into. Let's get this uh, stinking forge lit. All right, I think we're heated up enough to get this guy going. So we're gonna slap it in here and give it Give it a few minutes. We'll get that welded together. Thinking we are probably ready. See some little sparks coming off of this. Give this a couple quick little easy presses. And we'll get it back in the forge to heat up again. Okay, let's run this through again. Okay, 
Okay, we'll do one more heat and then uh, start drawing it out. All right, let's do this again. and get the uh, drawing dies on here. Hot. And also got to put my rounding die kiss blocks on here. And then put some thickness on here. start drawing this out. another heat. Let's draw a little more. Okay. I'm going to clean this up, put the flat dies back on, and we're just going to try and get some of these ridges out and then we should be good. Actually looking pretty straight so we just got to let this cool so this thing's all cooled off pretty much so what I want to do now is get rid of all the gunk around the outside of this and then surface grind this just a little bit and I just want to make sure that uh, the core stayed in the middle if you didn't notice while I was forging this, I didn't press down on the width of this where I would normally do that on a Damascus billet. This I don't when I have a core, when I have a sand mine of some sort, because one of the secrets to keeping the core right in the middle is not to forge down because as soon as you do that, things start twisting and bending. I mean, I know it can be done because plenty of people do it, but uh, if you really want to ensure that your core stays straight down the center, just, just forge the thickness. Don't forge the width of your billet or anything like that. So uh, I'm going to get going on this here. Let me get my respirator.
And one little grinding tip, if you're trying to hog material off really quick, put a contact wheel on, because it'll, it'll do a better job than the flat platen. And then just use the corner of the belt and it'll take material off really quick. I mean, this, this is a very worn out belt and it still takes material off really quickly. So contact wheel, corner of the belt, you'll be good. All right, I'm gonna do some surface grinding now. So I took it and I surface ground it. I figured you didn't really want to watch me surface grind another knife in this series or another billet in the series. So I surface ground it, took it up to 120. It's sitting in the ferric right now and I'm going to pull it out. It should be good. And here it is. So hoping you can see the pattern. So you can see right up here in these spots. These are areas that there's still some weld left in there, um, which is perfectly fine. I mean, I can, by, by etching it, I can pick and choose where I put the knife or where I take the knife from out of this billet. But also on the sides, I don't think I quite got down in to the core. Oh, actually right here. So you can see a little bit of the core right here. So I did keep it right in the middle, which is perfect. Actually, it looks like it's over to this side just a little bit, but that's good because I've still got to take some, some width off this or some thickness off this billet for the knife. Oh yeah. And you can see right up here too, a little bit. So once I cut the knife out, uh, we, we should be good with this. So, We're gonna, we're gonna call that a video. Um, finally, a shorter video, not something that's gonna be an hour long. But anyway, uh, so this is the billet, finally done. Uh, I'm kinda sad that I couldn't put the brass in there because I think that would really add a nice touch, uh, like the copper. I mean, maybe I could've done copper, but that one looked good with a brass guard that he wanted. But anyway, so, we're good on this video. Next video, I will start actually building the knife. So that should be fun. As always, thanks a ton for joining me for this video, and we'll see you on the next one. See ya.